Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutt of HurricaneTrack.com here with your off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion continuing now for Monday, the 24th of April, 2017. Let's start off with the sea surface temperature anomalies. You might be able to hear the rain outside my office. It is really pouring. We'll get to that in just a minute. But uh, here's a sea surface temperature anomalies map for today. Notice here in the Pacific we do have a pretty warm Nino 3.4 area. Now officially from the CPC Climate Prediction Center at 0.5 and maybe climbing. We'll see. We'll revisit this in just a moment. Notice too that the MDR out here, the main development region, definitely warmer than we have seen in quite a while. And the rest of the Atlantic over here, the Northeast Atlantic, um, not doing so bad either, especially if we compare it to a year ago. This is what things look like one year ago, roughly. We had a much colder look to the Northeast Atlantic, and a fairly warm MDR, MDR back then. And, of course, we had the lingering El Nino with some effects of the almost La Nina that kicked in. It, this stuff's the classification of it. Uh, how it meets the criteria, etc. We could, you know, discuss that for hours probably. Um, but the main thing that I like to look at, and, and others do as well, are sort of the larger puzzle pieces. And we can clearly see, you know, that the Pacific here, the Equatorial Pacific, it is warmer than normal for the most part, but it certainly isn't seething hot uh, like it was two years ago, as a good example here. And the main development region through here, and the rest of the Northeast Atlantic as a whole, uh, quite a bit above the long-term average as well. So, wow, wow, getting windy, lashing against the... I should have done this with me so I could do it near the window and you could see the rain behind me. That would have been cool. Um, I look like I got run over by a truck just a little while ago, so no camera on me today. But anyway, I digress. Uh, so looking at the subsurface map, this is what I want to show you next if I can get rid of that little blue arrow. So this uh, updated on the 18th of April, and you notice that this pesky little area, not so little actually, of uh, subsurface cooling or anomalously cold water still persist, and you have this ver very large area of warm anomalies. But on the whole, the area up here along the surface, really not that much heating going on. And the Nino 3.4 area right through here, and you know that's what's showing up as about a 0.5 degree anomaly today. Uh, as the start of the week begins here, like I mentioned from Climate Prediction Center. But I think this is just going to keep morphing and changing, and of course it will. And I'll show you why. If we go and look at the latest CFS forecast, this was talked about over the weekend uh, by a few, including Michael Ventress from WSI. And you notice here, first let me just point out what's what, your most recent ensemble runs are these blue lines right through here. And you see that most of them go this way in a downward trend. But let's not worry about that so much as let's just assume for the sake of argument that the CFS was going to be spot on and the ensemble mean was absolutely perfect. That, that, and this is what the temperature profile ends up as for the rest of the year. Well, here's August, September, October, and you can see that it's pretty, you know, far below right there, even one degree Celsius. Uh, so it's just just this side of warm neutral to extremely weak El Nino. So what I think is going to happen, just based on what I'm seeing with the subsurface warmth over here, or lack of it really, and you think about it, it really isn't that widespread up here at the surface yet. And the fact that some of these models are starting to sort of hedge their bets, if you will, I bet in the coming days, and this is updated I think every day, that we're going to see this ensemble mean start to go down a little bit. So I'm going to save this image and we're going to compare it and see how that works out. Uh, kind of an interesting way to obsess over it on a weekly basis, I guess. But it's going to matter because if we don't get an El Nino, it could be a different hurricane season than was thought about or forecast from some of these agencies uh, as of late. And that's how things go. You, you, you fine-tune stuff. Let's move on looking at the Gulf of Mexico actual sea surface temperatures. Yeah, they're getting there. The 26 degrees Celsius line, uh, roughly 80 degrees Fahrenheit, right about here. And you notice that the northern Gulf up here, the shelf water, there are some 25 Celsius areas showing up. That shallower water will heat up 
and cool off quickly. And it won't be long that the Gulf will be ready for hurricane activity. And um, it could be an interesting year. It's been a long time since 2008, as an example, since any hurricanes at all have made landfall along the Texas coast. 2008, that was Hurricane Ike. Will this be a, the year of change? We'll have to wait and see. In the Atlantic, this is interesting because we do have a system sitting out here at around 30 north and about 75 and some change west about right here. I'll show you that in a moment. And uh, it's going to be impacting the Outer Banks later tonight. This is the 25 degrees Celsius line and uh, pretty warm Gulf Stream through here, upper 70s Fahrenheit wise. And this is what it looks like on satellite picture. I want to show you this. Um, if we zoom out, you get the bigger picture, you get the idea. Lots of moisture feeding in to the southeast, very heavy rain, flash flooding issues. But this area, let me get rid of that again. Come on. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, still learning this computer. There we go. Now, why is this not being named or considered as a tropical storm or a tropical depression? Eh, well, you know, it did come from tropical origins down here. Uh, it, it probably has some warm core characteristics to it, but there's sort of this ill-defined low pressure center. The convection is mostly over to the east. That's the low pressure area right there. Kind of a surface trough. Not quite a front, but it just doesn't meet the criteria totally. And I think anybody can see that for the most part. It has a few, but not all of them, for it to be a tropical cyclone, a tropical depression, or a storm. There's another surface low sitting in here, and then you have your upper level energy, and then all this moisture being fed up between the two. And I'm going to tell you, this area along the Outer Banks here, as this comes in tonight, you're going to get lashed, and that's important. You know, at the end of the day, the storms matter, all right? That's what it, if it has a name or doesn't have a name, it's going to bring some nasty conditions up through here. And I want to make sure you are aware of that. Uh, this is going to take a couple of days for this whole mess here uh, to kind of move along and get out of the way. So a lot of heavy rain for parts of the east, but the Outer Banks of North Carolina into the Tidewater of Virginia could get quite a lashing tonight, so please be aware of that. And we can see that on the surface analysis here. There's the low pressure area in uh, South Carolina. Your cold front, warm front, surface trough, low pressure out here in the Atlantic, as I said, around 30 north, and roughly 75 and some change west. And there's that surface trough, so this is not completely detached on its own in a synoptic scale setup to get that tropical cyclone classification. If it was August or September, mm, it probably had a better chance, especially considering there would be less shear around. But again, the bottom line, if you're along the Outer Banks of North Carolina especially, you need to be aware that this is headed your way later today and tonight. So I want to go back here real quick. The um, outlook for today, SPC, here in the eastern Carolinas, marginal risk of severe weather. I would be more concerned about the flood risk, honestly. Maybe some wind gusts in some of these thunderstorms, and they could be enough to knock some trees down, so be aware of that. Then, as we go out into the future over the next few days, yeah, we do have some problems here. Day two, more in Tornado Alley, and then finally days four through eight. And um, so where's day three? I don't know why it does that, but there it is. Uh, basically, we're going to shift the severe weather threat uh, out here uh, to the plains and then going east from there. So in this general area, you need to have uh, a heads up, a wary eye to the sky uh, over the next few days because, hey, we're heading into May and probably going to have a pretty big severe weather outbreak to end the month here coming out of the plains into parts of the Ozarks and into northern Louisiana. So be aware of that, all right? So lots going on, lots to keep track of. Uh, we're getting closer to the hurricane season. Again, I'm going to be sort of obsessing over that El Nino situation. Uh, and we have the tools to do so, so why not, right? And um, again, one more time for you guys on the Outer Banks. Uh, you know, not a lot of visitors out there this time of year. A few local residents, long-term residents. Just be aware, especially since this thing's going to come in overnight. We don't want you to be caught by surprise, all right? Have a great rest of your Monday. As always, thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll talk to you in a week.